Hello, my name is Kyle Anderson, and today I'm going to talk about ureopelvic junction obstruction, or UPJ obstruction. In order to understand UPJ obstruction, you first have to understand the anatomy of the normal kidney, as well as a kidney with UPJ obstruction. So let's start with the, the normal kidney. You can see that here on the right side, so normal kidney. So first you have the normal parenchyma of the kidney, seen here in orange. This is the part of the kidney that makes urine, and when the urine's made, it comes down into the collecting system, which is shown here in the pelvis of the kidney, and then it goes down the ureter to the bladder. That's the normal function of the kidney, ureter, and bladder. And then the bladder holds the urine so that you can urinate periodically. And when we talk about ureteral pelvic junction obstruction, what we're focusing on is the area between the pelvis of the kidney, so the pelvis of the kidney, and the ureter. And that area is right here. Now if we go to the, the left hand side of the kidney with UPJ obstruction shown here, you can see that there's a narrow area at the UPJ and that's right here. And when we have a narrowing at that area, it causes a problem with urine getting from the kidney down to the bladder. So urine is produced by the kidney, it comes down and it tries to go through the ureter, but it's not able to because it's too tight, so instead it pushes out on the renal pelvis. And you can see how the renal pelvis is quite a bit larger than in the kidney with UPJ obstruction than the normal kidney. The name for this is hydronephrosis, and you may see in some of your radiology reports uh, that hydronephrosis is present, and that's what they're talking about. Now the cause of this narrowing at the UPJ can be many things. It can be congenital, it's essentially present for your entire life, or it could be due to scarring from kidney stones or other trauma to the area. Finally, you can occasionally have narrowing at this area due to a cancer within the ureter. This is fairly rare and tends to happen as people age or in people who have a long smoking history. The other cause of obstruction or blockage at the UPJ is a lower pole crossing vessel. This is essentially an artery that goes to the kidney from the aorta. And if you look here, this is the aorta, which is the large artery that carries blood from your heart through your abdomen down to your abdominal organs as well as to your legs. Now most of the time there's one artery to the kidney and that would be here, but in about 50% of people with UPJ obstruction and about 20% of people without UPJ obstruction, there's a second artery that comes down and goes to the lower part of the kidney and you can see it crosses the UPJ right here. And essentially what's happening is the artery is laying on the ureter and compressing it and it makes it hard for urine to get down the ureter. So even though the caliber of the ureter may be normal, it may have a normal, op uh, normal opening, because of the compression from the lower pole crossing vessel, the urine is not able to make it down to the bladder. And this has the same effect. It causes blockage. The urine is not able to make it down and pushes out and causes dilation or hydronephrosis. Now when we look at the effects of UP UPJ obstruction, there are a number of possibilities. It may have no effect at all. It may cause renal failure or decreased kidney function, or it may cause pain. If there's no effect, often people don't even know that UPJ obstruction is present. But if they tend to have pain especially, or if there's decreased renal function, then the negative effects of UPJ obstruction are apparent, and this is what leads to treatment for UPJ obstruction. Thank you very much for listening to this uh, discussion of UPJ obstruction.